Let's pray together. Let us hear and ponder and wonder and take it in, the mystery and the promise, the challenge and the hope that all lie here within the words of our faith story. Amen. And our scripture this morning is Luke 3, chapters, uh, chapter 3, verses 15 to 22. As the people were in expectation and everyone reflected in their hearts upon John, whether he might be the Christ or not, John answered them all. Indeed, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, the strings of whose shoes I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His fan is his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and will gather the wheat into his granary and he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then he preached many other things in his exhortations to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch being rebuked him by, but Herod the Tetrarch being rebuked by him because of Her Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added also this above them all. He locked John up in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Now, there's a slight variation between the way that Luke tells it and Matthew tells it. In Luke, we hear the voice of God speaking directly to Jesus with the dove coming down as the Holy Spirit and alighting upon him. And it said, he says, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. In Matthew, we hear God's voice speaking to the people, the crowds that are there on the banks of, uh, of the uh, Jordan and says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved. So uh, slightly different, um, a slightly different uh, take on it between the two. Um, and it's interesting because when often I hear parents and Sometimes you'll have parents, grandparents, who will uh, both tell their children and their grandchildren that they are beloved and also uh, share the praises with other people. But sometimes they'll share the praises of their children and grandchildren with others, but won't say directly to their children that they are pleased with them, that they are beloved. And, and I think that that's an interesting thing. And it also where They'll tell the children they're beloved, but don't speak about them outside of their home. Uh, in, this, in these two different versions, we have God saying both, that uh, you are my beloved, and I am well pleased with you. John was baptizing with water. Jesus was coming to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now, Leading up to this Sunday, I have been following a number of threads with uh, people, uh, different colleagues who have been talking about baptism in uh, the United Church and in general, and what the value of baptism is, and when should we do baptisms, and when we shouldn't do baptisms. And there are some, uh, some ministers who, and, and, and congregations who believe that um, you know, babies should not be baptized unless the uh, parents are committing to uh, come to church and raise the child in the church and they have to be members of good standing and have been there for a long time. And other, other ministers are, have said, we will baptize anyone who, who comes and asks to be baptized. And there's theological reasons for both arguments. Um, many are saying, why do we do infant baptism? Why do we not wait until people are old enough to, um, to choose themselves to be baptized? 
And, um, and of course, then the conversation went to here in the United Church. We baptize um, at any age. Often it's infants that are being baptized. And, and when it has been an infant that has been baptized or a young child, then we have confirmation. And, uh, and it comes to a point in the, in the child's life where they're entering into adulthood and they, um, and they choose whether to confirm those uh, vows that were made on their behalf when they were baptized. For me, I think that what it comes down to is that the act of baptism does not in and of itself confer any special privileges or status. What it is, is an affirmation of God's grace that is already present with, uh, with each person, everyone who has been born, and even those who are not born. Um, baptism is an outer sign of the inner grace of God. And on this Sunday, when we uh, mark the baptism of Jesus, we remember our own baptism as well. While I was looking through the, um, uh, the pages, a, a, a picture came up and it had, it was along the roadside in, uh, in Palestine and uh, the, it was a sign in it and it just, it was like a, a roadside, a parking sign, but it said uh, this way to the site of the baptism of Jesus. And as soon as I saw it, I recognized it and remembered seeing it when I was there in Palestine and I visited the site of, uh, of where they uh, say this is where Jesus was baptized, where John was doing his baptisms in the River Jordan. I also went to the source of the Jordan River. And uh, when I was at the source of the Jordan, I was able to get water from the Jordan River. And this, this vase, which is like the candlestick that I had earlier, this vase is from Hebron, and in it is water from the source of the Jordan. And uh, whenever I do a baptism, I put a few drops of this water into the baptismal font. Uh, another colleague that I have also um, asks everyone in the congregation to bring uh, just a, a like a little thimbleful, an ounce of water from their homes, and that's all added to the baptismal font as they enter the church, so that it talks about the commitment of the congregation to that child and to that family to honor their baptism, to do everything we can to support a new family. And I think that that's really where our focus can be is how are we helping this family um, find Christ in their lives? And we do that by being, uh, being the hands and feet for Christ uh, to these families as they bring their babies for baptism. When I was, uh, when I visited the site of the baptism in Palestine, it was such a, uh, everything that, everything that I experienced was almost always full of paradox, um, full of mystery. And, and, and I think that that's just, you know, such a metaphor for life. Um, we go expecting something to be holy and sacred or we expect something to be completely mundane. And yet neither is one or the other. It's always an integration of both with God. God created this whole earth and, and, and everything in earth and all of creation and all of us have that divine touch as well as, the, as our human uh, nature. And so, uh, so I visit the site and we get there and there's um, tourist buses lined up along the side of the road. And there's a long line of people going in to be baptized. And so you, you go into a room and you're given a white gown 
and you go in a little change room and you change into this white gown and then you line up to go out and down into the river. And so there was this like a assembly line of people going to get baptized in the river. And then on the other side, on my on my left side, there was a, a, a large open area, like a little, um, uh, 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 what's it called when, when you have the, um, the forum. Uh, so the, all of the members of the congregation, there were about 25 of them were seated on rocks up the side of the hill and, the, and their minister was below them on the bank of the river. And they were uh, like an amphitheater and they were and and they were discussing scripture and everything and when they were ready they they went into the water together to be baptized and i was in the middle a place that was just sort of open for people to go and i waded down into the river jordan and i had my feet in the mucky ooze of of the riverbed feeling the reeds and some pebbles and mostly just pretty thick mud and the water running past me and and on the one hand this this you know people who have paid tons of money in order to come through this lineup to get dunked and back up again and on the other side this this group that had traveled together studying the scripture and being baptized and I thought this is it this is what it's about it's it's the mundane and the and the and the holy the muck and the mire that from which we came, from which we evolved, and the Holy Spirit present there in everything. And it was holy, and it was blessed, and it was an amazing experience. And I just came away realizing that, you know, no matter where we are or what we're doing, in the messiest of places, in the cleanest of places, in the most uh, holy, sacred places, and in the middle of downtown Toronto. It doesn't matter where we are. God is with us. God is there calling our name, inviting us to open our hearts to the grace that is there, ready, already present with us, ever present with us. And for that, we can give thanks. Amen. Amen. This, uh, this next hymn is called To the River Jesus Journeyed, and it's by Juanita Austin. And I found a hymn of hers that I used during Advent, and I was so taken by it that I ordered her book. And so I've got a whole, um, a whole bunch of beautiful hymns that use familiar tunes and uh, but have uh, new lyrics. And so this is, uh, I really uh, like the lyrics for this and I hope that you will too. Um, it's sung to the tune that we're familiar with of um, two, uh, 374. So, um, da, 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 da. Um, so you will recognize that. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Heather. Um, to lead us in that
tip second for today is you are God's beloved people gifted to be a blessing. The service I'm using today and uh, for the next five sun four Sundays now are um, part of the, the stewardship worship resource that uh, can be found on the United Church of Canada page. And I'm just adapting it slightly each week, but um, a lot of the prayers and uh, and focus uh, is from the stewardship, reminding us of our gifts and our talents and the wonders that uh, we can bring to this uh, to this community. We are indeed recipients of God's grace and generosity. God loves us and affirms us. But in receiving, we are also called to give, to share, and to live lives of gratitude. Baptism reminds us that ordinary gifts can do extraordinary things. Baptism inspires us to use our gifts, not knowing how they might transform. Our offerings of time, talent, and money will gratefully be received. Now is the opportunity to share your gifts to further the church's work and the spirit's mission. Oh God, we give you thanks for our community of faith and we give in gratitude for your watchful presence with us throughout the years. Amen. And today for our prayers of the people, we're going to begin our prayers for the people with uh, Lord, listen to your children praying. God of mystery and light, we come to you this day in awe and wonder at your beauty and your ability to create and recreate all that swirls around us. You call us to be in covenant with you, to know and receive your love and to give it back to all creation, to each other and to you. Envelop us this day Surround us in the safety that is the knowledge that your spirit is with us as we seek to follow the path of Christ. So much of your world is lost this day. People are lost to each other. Children are lost from their parents and caregivers. Men and women are lost in their struggle with drugs and alcohol. Families are lost because of disagreement unemployment and heartbreak. Countries are lost in the dust of war. Refugees cry out in their loss of home and loss of safety. But yet your light shines wherever we are, searching us out as a lighthouse searches for a ship at sea. Your grace reminds us that we are worthy to be named even if you must name and rename us so that we hear you calling to us. We are affirmed before we ask for affirmation. May we live in awe and wonder at this reality. This day, we lift up those in our community who feel like they don't belong because they might not fit in with the social norms at either school or work because they are controlled by fear and anxiety, 
because they feel alone or judged, because they are sick or paralyzed by grief. Enable us to be the one to help others to hear their name being called, to receive your love, your hope, and your spirit of peace. We thank you that you have given us hands that can reach out, eyes that can see deep beneath the surface, ears that hear truth, mouths that speak justice, and hearts that open wide to give and receive your love. Thank you for the will to try again when we fail, when we fail, when we need to learn from you and from each other. Send your spirit once again to help us use these gifts for the betterment of your world and the coming of your kingdom. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is, I have called you by your name. I love this one from More Voices. now may God's love and grace shine upon you may the light of Jesus shine from within you may the joy of the spirit shine all around you and may you and those you love wherever they might be remember who you are and to whom you belong amen amen may it be so this day and forevermore Amen. God bless you all. And I believe that Heather has a beautiful, uh, she chose a beautiful um, online post with the Algonquin Water Song, which I do hope that you um, go and check out. But in the meantime, Heather also has a post live for us. Thank you, Heather. Uh, the live post with today is uh, an arrangement of Oh Worship the King. And uh, it's been arranged by Cindy DeConsola.